last week was certainly a trying week for the city. Last Tuesday morning, as you know, during the height of the morning rush commute, a man fired more than 30 shots inside of a subway car. He wounded 10 people, but by some miracle, none of those injuries are life-threatening. However, the emotional toll and trauma for those injured and for all subway riders will continue on for some time. Now, we closely follow the manhunt for the suspect. And though he was taken in by police just over a day later, the investigation brought up concerns about the functionality of simple things like cameras in the subway system. The NYPD was quick to call out reports that some cameras along the subway line did not work. NYPD Deputy Commissioner John Miller said statements that the lack of cameras on the station delayed the manhunt by many hours are unfair and that they're misleading. He added, while it has become routine to cast blame in many directions after an incident, we should remember that the gunman is the sole party responsible for this attack, end quote. But times like these for communities, they really turn to their local leaders for answers and actions. This morning, we're trying to get some of those answers. We're going on the record with Brooklyn Council Member Alexa Aviles. And so the council member now joining me represents Sunset Park, where all of this took place. Council member, thank you for being here on Picks on Politics. Thank you so much for the invitation. So, council member, I want to talk about healing and what comes next for your district in just a moment. But first, let's start off with that statement from the police that we just saw on the cameras inside the subway system and that they were not working there. What did you make of that of that statement? Well, you know, I, I, I wasn't surprised that the cameras in that station wasn't working. In fact, I mean, it's an endemic problem across the city. Much of the cameras don't work. Um, sadly, we know the cameras would not have prevented this act of violence. It would have given us uh, other angles of recording. Mm -hmm. Additionally, though, you know, you are a member of the city council and the speaker of the council released a letter last week saying that New Yorkers need to know what the MTA is doing to close the gaps in coverage and improve safety conditions in the subway. So what can the council do here? Like you said, it wouldn't have prevented this from happening, but perhaps it may have sped up the process of catching the individual. We don't know that. But what can the council do moving forward? Yeah, I think, I think many in the council um, are really looking at, at prevention, right? I think, um, Sadly, this is not the first mass shooting here or even across the country, right? This is an ongoing occurrence and we're really eager to get at root causes um, to really address the situation. And so, you know, I, I think we can look at certainly functional cameras, yeah. but we want to look at prevention. We want to look of at course. root causes. But does the council have power over what takes place with those cameras or, or with the system overall, or is that really a state legislative function? That's that's a great question. You know, the MTA is not a city agency. Um, it is, you know, the authority is through the state. Um, and so that is certainly a question and it's a budgeting operational question. Um, so, yeah, so there will need to be some some state oversight there. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, you know, the, the, the subway system is the lifeblood of New York yeah, City. Yeah. Um, we want it to be both effective and, and, and um, efficient in its services, right? We want working right. bathrooms. We want a subway system that is accessible to folks with disabilities. So the truth of the matter is the subway system needs an uh, enormous amount right. of funding and support in all the right places that would have, um, that will support New Yorkers on a daily basis, yeah. not only during these emergency yeah. moments. And these are early days after, so certainly keep us posted on where this goes and what the conversations are. But I spoke to you, Councilmember, on the day of the attack. I was anchoring the breaking news coverage. You joined us as a live guest. You told me your daughter was on her way to that very subway station to head to school. So we're almost a week after the attack. Have you sent her back to the subway? So my daughter, like other New Yorkers, was on the train the next day. Mm. Um, we took her to school. She wasn't ready, but um, like other New Yorkers, she realized she had to get back on the train because that's what she does every day. That's how she's going to get to school. Um, so as, as was widely covered, um, that morning, that yeah. very morning, as soon as the trains were operational, people were back on the right. subway. We have no other way to get to work and to do the things we need to do. And so with fear and trepidation and concern, uh, people got right back on the subway. Yeah, like you said, it is the lifeline, right? And New Yorkers 
they're strong and they're resilient and they'll say we're going to do it. You know, nothing's going to hold us back. And, and speaking of your daughter heading back to school, a lot of the schools in your neighborhood of Sunset Park, they were told to shelter in place that morning. And that can be a lot for both students and staff to process, right? And now there's this talk of metal detectors or some kind of detection devices both in the subways and even in schools. So are you, are you in favor of, of these and would the council be involved in actually passing some kind of law that would make that actually possible? So I guess the first thing to say about the schools is that, you know, the, the children certainly that were already in the buildings, our educators, principals really went into the rapid lockdown training and the children were safe. They yeah. immediately did sweeps Great. around their buildings. Um, so, you know, if anything worked in terms of emergency response, uh, our schools were yeah. on it. Um, and we are ever so thankful, as were, as were so many parents that I talked to that day and the day after. Um, you know, I, I guess the thing that is important for our school children is not only did some of our high schoolers were on the platform mm -hmm. and in the immediate vicinity um, experience this, you know, violence and trauma, those who did not experience it directly are still sitting with the trauma of feeling unsafe and seeing the, you know, the mm -hmm. news clippings over and over again and, right. and the conversations. So there's an enormous need of um, making sure that we are providing mental health supports right. to our students. We have, we're still sitting on the heels of a global pandemic in a community that's deeply impacted and lost thousands of, you know, New Yorkers, right? We lost six, yeah. 60,000 New York City residents in the last two years. We're sitting with some immense right. trauma and yeah. insecurity. And so we really need um, as much mental health interventions and supports um, as member. we can muster. Yeah, I'm almost, we're only at 20 seconds left. Sorry. But that's okay. No, no, this has been a great conversation here. I know healing is so important and mental health is a huge aspect of that. And I love covering that angle of it. But on the, on the metal detector front, is the, in right. the subways, city council, can they get involved? Uh, uh, not that I understand, right? There's a jurisdictional issue here. Um, you know, honestly, metal detectors in the subway, if you've been in a subway, uh, I, I just don't see operationally how that happens. Right. Um, you know, I think we got to we gotta focus on prevention. A metal detector, you know, the, doesn't stop violence. Um, we see it all over the place. So I just really feel like we need to focus the conversation right. and really use evidence-based approaches and really get to root causes. Yeah. Uh, Council member Alexa Aviles, when I say metal detector, I mean that the, the, really the surveillance system that the, that the mayor is talking about. He's not saying detectors per se, but some kind of device that would scan something. But we're out of time here. Um, and I really appreciate you being on here. And I, I'm glad to hear that your daughter, by the way, is OK and back on the subways heading to school. Uh, Council member Aviles, appreciate Thank you. you being here. Bye bye. Thank you so much. All right. Keep us posted, OK? We want to talk again in the future.